Daniel 8.14, and the 2300 evenings and mornings. So I'll have a question for you, but before doing that, I want to play a clip here from Cliff Goldstein. It's about four minutes or so long, so let's listen, and then I'll ask you the question after that. And You know, our church, our church was founded upon a text that I suspect the vast majority of you don't think about all that much. And that text is Daniel 8, 14. And he said unto me for 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now, based on this text, a Baptist named William Miller believed that in 1844, October 22nd to be sure, to be precise, Jesus Christ was going to come return to the earth. Okay? Obviously, Miller was wrong, and the Millerite movement pretty much disappeared into history. With one notable exception, a group of people over the next few years looked again at the prophecy, and eventually it became apparent what Miller's mistake was. And really, in one sense, it was an easy mistake to make. If you parallel the prophecies of Daniel 2, Daniel 7, and Daniel 8 together, and they are parallel prophecies, you get, if you saw yesterday, a sequence. All right, put the slide up. Put the slide up for me. You get a sequence of, okay, you guys, okay, good. You get the sequence of world events. Babylon across, Medo Persia, Greece, Rome, pre-advent judgment sanctuary being cleansed, and then God's eternal kingdom. And the cleansing of the sanctuary parallels the pre-advent judgment. And this is followed immediately by Jesus' return, God's eternal kingdom being set up. We looked at that quite a bit yesterday, okay? And Miller's mistake, and if you read the text, you can see why he made it. So it was to confuse this massive judgment scene in heaven and with what it results in, which is the second coming of Jesus. Okay, he saw the parallel between the sanctuary and the judgment, but he kind of conflated them, and he thought that that would meant God's eternal kingdom at the end of time. And he was obviously wrong. But look at these texts here. Look at these verses. I want you to look at these judgment verses. Okay, you could take that down. Okay, Daniel 7, 9 through 10. I watched till the thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow. His hair on his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. Its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand, thousand ministered unto him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. And then Daniel 7, 21 and 22. I was watching and the same horde made war against the saints, prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came. And a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. As I said yesterday and repeat again, there was this massive judgment scene in heaven. And right after this judgment scene in heaven, the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. And that happens after Jesus comes back. 
So you've got this massive judgment scene in heaven before the second coming of Jesus, before the second advent. Hence, you have what we call a pre-advent judgment. All right. So in light of what we looked at earlier, is he correct? Does Daniel 8.14 perfectly parallel Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 evidencing this pre-advent investigative judgment? No, and uh, there's a, I don't know, two dozen problems here. (laughs) But but one thing is, back in Daniel 2, it mentions that the kingdom, right? It mentions these four kingdoms and then another. uh, It mentions that one being set up at, at the time right of the fourth kingdom Uh, it says in uh, daniel 2 44 it says in the days of those kings the god of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed so it's not talking about an event that would take place 1844 you know years later it had to be during the time of that fourth kingdom which isn't still reigning on the earth uh daniel 7 same problem and then Daniel 8, and I, I'm assuming this is what you're primarily after when you ask if they're all exactly parallel. Uh, you know, if you go through Daniel 8, the, the person in view there, when it's talking about bringing an end uh, to the regular sacrifice and so forth, is Antiochus Epiphanes. It, I mean, if you're just following the historical flow, right? So, uh, I mean, there's more problems here. I don't know if you want me to get into them yet, but I mean, uh, there's not an exact parallel at that point. The huge problem that's glaring to me, I mean, the verse just doesn't allow for this in in a whole host of ways. I mean, number one, so I I mean, I did look a little bit at this idea that Daniel 14 is relevant to their system. And part of what I gathered is they're they're trying to claim that it's talking about 2300 days and then they're saying that a day stands for a year which is the sort of thing that you could argue is is present elsewhere but the problem is that it doesn't use the term day here and moreover it it doesn't even I mean what it says literally is evening morning and note that uh Evening, it doesn't say evening and morning. It doesn't say evenings and mornings, though I, I do think it's clear that it's talking about many. But that the idea is from the grammar that you have it, it's it's a reference contextually to the the daily sacrifice in, in Jerusalem at the temple. There was a morning and evening sacrifice when Jesus died when he's put on the cross. The Gospels draw attention to this. They mention that he was put on the cross at nine. Right, and then uh, he was taken down, uh, or he he died at, at three, and that was the time of the morning and evening sacrifice. You have that correspondence there in the Gospels, uh, but yeah, so it doesn't use the the necessary term from which you could get a day year principle. It, it says evening morning, and as I take it, and I know there's discussion here. The one thing there's there's no discussion about among commentators is. There's no question that it doesn't have anything to do with what the Adventists are talking about. But one could argue that it's either referring to 2,300 days, which I don't see how it works, or you could say that it's referring to 1,150 uh, because the, the idea is that it, it, it's it's counting. The, the way the grammar is you know, evening, morning, 2,300s, it's, it's saying together, right, these two things. So you have... 1150 morning offerings, 1150 evening offerings. And then when you look at that, I mean, it, uh, the correspondence of the, of the time frame works out pretty nicely, right? You have, uh, you know, the, uh, Antonis Epiphanes ceasing the, the offering. And then subsequent to that offering a pagan sacrifice, Oh, I mean, the other problem with this verse is that it's not talking about anything being cleansed. That has nothing to do with the verse. The The Hebrew term that would need to be used for something pertaining to cleansing is just not used here. The, the Hebrew word that's used here is the word sadak, which means righteous, but here it's in the nifal, which means to be put right. And the idea is that here here's the, te- it's not a heavenly temple either. Right, which in, in the context, how could it be a heavenly? It's talking about it being trampled underfoot. Who's trampling underfoot the heavenly courts? 
right? I mean, so many problems. I and and I'm not the guy that sits around thinking about Adventist stuff all day long. I looked at this the other day, and I'm like, there's just no way you're going to get the 1844 investigative judgment out of this, right? Uh, it, it's talking about this uh, being trampled underfoot. Clearly, not a heavenly uh, temple. It's not talking about 2,300 days or years, but evening, morning sacrifices. And uh, it, it's talking about everything being put right at the end of this period, meaning yeah. it, it had been, you know, everything had been brought to a grinding halt and had been used for pagan purposes now. And so, uh, again, I mean, I don't know how many reasons that was to say there's a problem here. And I'm sure there's more if I spent another 10 minutes thinking about it 